when was the last time I actually progressively overloaded on something? When was the last time I actually hit a VB? Hello, so welcome to episode four of my little glute series and today's video is one for my more advanced ladies and men too, and men if you're watching this, but it's more women that watch these videos. So when I started this glute series, I wanted to make sure that there was stuff in there for everyone, stuff in there for beginners, stuff in there for more advanced people, intermediate people, if you're somewhere in the middle. I wanted to make sure there's gonna be something for everyone. So today's video is gonna be more so for my more advanced ladies because we are going to be talking about plateaus, how to bust through them and actually see more progress when it seems to have come to a grinding halt. So according to Google, the definition of plateau is an area of fairly level high ground, we're not gonna be talking about that today, um, a state of little or no change following a period of activity or progress. So naturally this video is gonna be a lot more useful to my ladies who have been lifting for a longer time, who've been training for a longer time because the longer you've been training, the more plateaus you're gonna hit. It. Girls, if you are currently a newbie to the gym, embrace it. Make the most of this time because the progress that you see, you will see so much progress in a short space of time compared to when you've been lifting for a while. The progress really does come in drips and tiny drips at that. But yeah, if your progress has kind of come to a grinding halt and you're not really seeing much more progress anymore and you wanna find out how to break through that, then this video is definitely for you. I'm gonna tell you my top five tips for getting through a plateau and recommendations that I would make that you can implement into your training, into your routine to really help you get through this period of time. In a nutshell, the longer you've been training, the more you need to optimize everything. So number one is to make sure that you are following a personalized plan that suits your goals, your recovery, your training preference, what your body responds well to. I'm assuming if you have hit a plateau, you have been training for a while and you should know by now what your body responds best to. I've spoken about this in other videos, but there's so many like genetic differences. Some people can literally train with a lower volume and they see better results with that. Some people have to train with a higher volume and that's how they see better results. There are gonna be differences person to person, but the benefit that you have if you have been training for a while is you should know by now what works best for you. Now, guides and stuff like that, they are all good for beginners, but the longer you've been training, the more important it is for you to have something that's personalized to you something that works something that can really really push you and so now is not going to be the time for you to think oh I'm going to buy a generic guide a generic plan now is the time for you to actually say no I need to hone in on what I know works best for me you could create your own training program you could hire a coach to do it for you hire a PT to do it for you yeah point number one is to just get a personalized plan that is really really tailored to you what your body responds well to what you can recover from so you can really achieve some optimal results with your training and if you have been training a little bit longer you can start adding in some advanced training systems into to that personalized program to push you that little bit further so things like drop sets pyramid sets stuff like that which will help you to squeeze that little bit more progress out of your glute training sessions so yeah point number one is now would be the time if you don't already to get a personalized training program number two is to take a deload week now a deload week a lot of people think is taking time off the gym taking a break from the gym it's not it's still going to the gym but you are not going to be training anywhere near as hard for me i take week long deloads but people do tend to do them for different durations but the most popular way to do it is to take a week's deload and there's multiple ways of doing this some people choose to go lighter weight some people choose to use less volume some people choose to tying into volume, do less sets on the exercises that they're doing. Say they would normally do four sets of something in their deload week, they might only do two. But all of these are in essence the same thing and you are basically just not pushing your body as hard. You're not going to like a 10 on the RPE scale during your deload week. You might wanna knock it down to more of like a five or a six. You're still training, still putting a stimulus on your muscles, but you're not looking to absolutely batter yourself or progressively overload in your deload week. 
So yeah, try incorporating some deloads and doing these periodically. Some people take them every four weeks, some people take them every six weeks, some people take them every eight weeks, but just make sure that you are programming in a time for you to deload from your training. And a little analogy that I got from my coach about deloads, which I think is really good, is say you're going to the sea. You're not gonna wanna go in the sea if you've not got a towel with you. Think of that deload week as the towel in the C situation. So that week before, if you know you're deloading the following week, you are going to be more likely to really push yourself in your sessions, set some new PBs and really overreach in your training because you know next week I'm deloading, I've got time to rest and recover and I'm not going to be absolutely battering my body. It's going to give you that motivation to push really, really hard in that final week before you deload and I think that's a really good way of explaining how a deload can actually help you bust through a plateau it's also just really good for recovery so if you've not been recovering properly from your sessions it gives you time to properly recuperate which means that you can actually get more out of your sessions post deload and see more progress so moving on to point number three is you might actually just want to peel back, peel it back those glute sessions a little bit full stop generally like in your normal training not just talking about deloads here but what can actually happen is if you are doing too much volume if you are constantly training super super hard and doing loads and loads and loads of volume is that you might get so used to training in that way that you don't actually remember what it's like to actually recover properly from your sessions and without knowing it you're not recovering properly from your sessions if you are over training you are never going to recover from those sessions some of the volume that some people do and everyone is different some people can recover from super super high volume but some of the volume that some people do there is no way that you can recover sufficiently from battering yourself with that every single week. And what's that gonna mean? It's gonna mean that you have not got the sufficient energy going into your other sessions. It means you're not gonna be able to progressively overload. And what will probably happen and what will make you realize you're doing this is you'll sit down and you'll think, when was the last time I actually progressively overloaded on something? When was the last time I actually hit a BB? That is when you want to think, let me just peel back this volume. Let me dial it down a bit because you might be overtraining. Point I'm making really with point two, because that does kind of tie into this and point three, is that you cannot go balls to the wall 52 weeks a year, honey. No, you're going to run into injuries. You're not going to be able to progressively overload. Like you are just going to be knackering yourself and absolutely battering yourself. I love training hard as much as the next person. I encourage all of you to train hard. I encourage all my clients to train hard. I also encourage them to take their proper rest and take their proper rest days. And it's really important that you fluctuate your training stress both throughout the year and also throughout your cycle. So some people do four week blocks, six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, whatever tickles your pickle. Everyone seems to like following a program for a different amount of time. And basically there is something called your minimum effective volume and your maximum recoverable volume. So what you wanna do week one of a training program should always be minimum effective volume. You want to work out what that point is for you. Something where you will see results from it, but you're not getting absolutely battered from it. You're not getting super, super sore. What is the minimum you can do basically? What is the minimum you can do and still get results? Over the weeks of that cycle, so let's say you're doing an eight week cycle, by the time you get to week eight, you will have upped your weights, upped your reps, maybe added extra sets, some form of progressive overload each week, every two weeks, whenever you can progressively overload. If you feel like you can do more, do more. And by the time you get to week eight, you are gonna be working, hopefully, fingers crossed, at your maximum recoverable volume. Now this is the max volume that you can do and still recover from. So it's kind of the opposite end. So your MEV there and your MRV there, week one week eight. You have fluctuated your training stress. You've started at a minimum training step stress and gone to your maximum training stress where you can still recover efficiently from that. And normally what you would do after that eighth week is you would say, right, I'm going to take a deload week and then I'm going to start again. You might start a new program. You might start the same, the same program again and work your way up and progressively overload again. In essence, fluctuate your training stress. Make sure you are recovering properly. Sometimes if you've been training for a long time and you've been training incredibly hard for a long time, you kind of accept like this 
permanent state of soreness or fatigue or whatever that's not normal if you start to feel like that prioritize your recovery take a deload week if you've not taken one make sure that you are not overtraining. you might just need to look over your plan in general and say right is this a little bit excessive and peel it back a little bit point number four is the longer you've been training the more specific you're going to need to be in other areas of your life to optimize your results sleep nutrition stress all gonna play a factor in the results that you achieve with your training so nutrition it kind of goes without saying the optimal and i say optimal i'm not saying you can't build muscle in other states i'm saying optimal we're speaking optimally here especially if you're at a plateau you really want to be doing things optimally <laughs> so the optimal state for you to be in is a calorie surplus if you're looking for muscle growth protein about one gram per pound of body weight make sure that you, your nutrition is in check with what you're actually trying to achieve here sleep also very very important for recovery if you're not sleeping properly you're not going to be recovering from your sessions now i'm not going to make a blanket statement and say you need to get seven to eight hours of sleep every night because in my experience everyone seems to run differently and thrive off different bits of sleep i'm not going to say sleep for two hours a night i don't think that's going to be very good but you're not stupid you will know if you are tired you will know if you are not getting enough sleep so make sure that you are prioritizing your sleep getting enough sleep set yourself a nighttime routine just like you would a morning routine a really good tip for this which i got from my coach was to set an alarm on a night like you would on a morning for when you want to start getting ready for bed start switching off your phone anything that's got blue light in it that could like wake you up and prevent you from getting sleep maybe read a book before bed that will honestly it's been a bit of a game changer for me not gonna lie so sleep is really important as well and stress also i mean no one wants to be stressed but just make sure that you are managing your stresses in life to the best of your ability everyone has stresses in life you are never going to be completely stress free i don't think stress is inherently bad i think it can push you that little bit but excessive stress is not good for you. It's not good for you physically, it's not good for you mentally. And also if you're super, super stressed, are you gonna be focusing in your sessions? Are you gonna be really pushing for PBs in the gym? No, you're not. So make sure that all the other areas of your life that will impact on your training are also in check. Because the longer you've been training, the more important these little fine tuning things can become to seeing more progress and breaking through a plateau. Moving on to number five, I would say if you have not already, invest in a personal trainer or a coach if you are in the position to do so. Like me personally, I am a coach myself, but I also have a coach because it's so valuable to have an objective opinion on your training program progress how best to go about achieving the results that you want to achieve and also sometimes we're super harsh on ourselves and we're like i'm not making any more progress i've hit a huge plateau and then you send these check-in pictures to your coach or you check in with your pt in person every week or whatever there and they will see progress that you might not even see yourself and it can be really really helpful like i have clients who are like i don't feel like i've made any progress over the past four weeks i send them a picture from week one to week four and they're like wow like i didn't even realize that i had done that i'm not trying to sell my coaching to you guys like I'm, I'm not doing that find a coach find a pt that works for you if it's something you can afford to do and something you want to do it can be really really valuable in pushing through a period where you've seen little to no progress aka a plateau so they are my five main tips but i do have a number six which is just a little bonus point which i just wanted to throw in there is to just not be so harsh on yourself you have to be realistic with yourself basically the longer you have been training the closer you are getting to your genetic potential now i know people hate to talk about genetics because they're like i got this from hard work none of it was genetics you may have worked incredibly hard your genetics are also going to play a huge role like no one can tell me that their genetics haven't played 
a role in their progress and it was 100% hard work because if that was the case everyone that works super super hard would end up looking the same and they don't so yeah the longer you've been training the closer you are getting to like what you can realistically achieve naturally I'm not going to start telling people to go on steroids because I'm just not it might be slower but it's still something to be super super proud of you've still stuck with it you're still training hard and you're still actually trying to progress even though it's slower and that takes a lot more work than it did at the start trust me <laughs> like I have a few clients that are brand new to the gym and they're adding like five kilograms ten kilograms to their lifts every week and I'm like I'm so jealous. because I miss being able to do that the longer you've been training the harder it gets but I just find that so rewarding and I don't think it's something that should put people off from trying harder. You don't know what your genetic potential is so you may as well try your bloody best to get there but just don't be so harsh on yourself and don't expect to get the rapid results that you got at the start because the longer you've been training the harder it does get the closer you are to that genetic potential whatever that may be so just don't be super super harsh on yourself and set yourself some realistic time limits if you've been training five years you're not going to achieve the same progress that you did in six months at the start in six months time frame now it's just not going to happen you need to set yourself some longer term goals and that will be really really helpful yeah those are just some tips on pushing through a plateau like i said these are not an exhaustive list there are other things if you want a part two or if you want me to give some more in like the comments down below then i can do these would just be my top tips and things that i think you should focus your attention on if you are that person who has hit a plateau if you have any questions about anything i've said comment them down below or message me on instagram which is just amy rooks but yeah feel free to message me if you've got any questions you need any help you want to hear any more advice about getting through a plateau and if you are enjoying this video and this series in general then give this video a thumbs up it really does help a gal out and subscribe if you wanna and you haven't already any videos you want to see as always let me know yeah and i hope you found the video useful